Welcome back. Nigeria has a budding software development industry with a growing community for developers. And a number of these developers continue to build software applications to address some of the country's socioeconomic challenges. But despite this rise, a lot is still being lost to the acquisition and maintenance of foreign software used in the country. As findings from a survey of industry players conducted by the Nigerian Communications Commission in 2018 shows that some 7% of software in use in the country are foreign, while only 23% are obtained locally. Larry Olanio, founder of NUMS, tells us more. The software industry has been growing and it's still growing and it's a good thing. It's a lot better than it used to be. Uh, our tech guys are a lot uh, smarter, they understand the language better and the world is even beginning to recognize that there are talents in Nigeria. Yes, the industry is progressing. And would you attribute this growth to the fact that the challenges in the industry have been gradually addressed or is it based on the rise in learning platforms? Well, I will attribute it to two major things. There are a lot of things, okay, but there are two major ones that stand out. One, there's a lot of uh, training platforms available for people to learn more than before. A lot of organizations are taking it upon themselves to train locals, to develop them. There are a lot of uh, online trainings that are available better than it used to be, okay? And then the second thing is that lately, uh, the whole world, not just the Nigerian population, are beginning to accept uh, products and applications developed in Nigeria. Nigerians are really good. Like in an informal setting, some people say that Nigeria have one of the best, uh, Nigeria produces one of the best UIs developers in the world. So yes, uh, acceptance and trainings has helped the industry so much, apart from other things too. With the influx of people learning software engineering, do you think the industry is saturated? No, 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 far from it. Uh, yes, there's a lot of people learning now. There's a lot of knowledge out there. But the truth is that the industry doesn't have enough yet. It's far from being saturated. Uh, we still need a lot of developers, especially back-end and senior levels developers, as this very scarce, okay? So there's still room for a lot of uh, people to come in. There's room for us to do a lot. And I believe with that, a lot can stay happening. If you see what's happening with the banks today, they are losing resources every day. If there are resources out there, we won't see what we what we are seeing today. Okay, so yes, there's still room for more. One of the perks of being a software engineer is the fact that one can operate as a freelancer. Would you say that that's a contributor to the success recorded in the industry? Yes. Uh, the way I see it is that the, the industry offers a lot of flexibility, okay? Um, well, fortunately or unfortunately, COVID happened and that changed the perception that a lot of people have about how we can work. And that actually have changed how uh, people are hired in the industry. So yes, freelancers are allowed, remote workers are allowed. And because of that, people actually have time to achieve more because they spend less time commuting they spend less time in traffic, and that has really helped the industry. Let's talk about policies now. Yes. For Nigeria to have a viable software ecosystem, is it not essential to have policies that would you know, benefit local software companies? Yes, I agree with you. In every gathering, every society, when there are no rules, they are bound to be chaos. Okay, so policies are good, but one of the things I would advise the policy maker is that we really need to make policies that are all inclusive, that are constructive and that are developmental, not just for the country, but for the people that are in it too. More than often, you notice that many of the policies are on these neighbors and uh, stifle growth and uh, discourage investors. We need to look at that and make sure that our policies are not tailored in that direction. But once uh, to control the industry and make things work, they have to be rules. And once they are rules, it makes things better. Some stakeholders in the industry are quite concerned about the inadequate government support and the infiltration by foreign solutions. They think that this needs to be addressed in order for Nigerian software companies to gain relevance in the country as well as in other regions. Yeah, well, there are two sides to that. I, yes, I agree with you. 
Uh, government has a lot to do to help our local industry to thrive. But at the same time too, I can tell you that uh, some of the applications developed in Nigeria are actually are competing at par with some from other parts of the world. And I see many of Nigerian applications being used in other countries, especially in Africa. Okay, so yes, our industries are growing. Uh, government has much to do. And I believe that when the government actually help and support, we can do more, okay? And again, many of the people in government don't understand what they stand to gain if they can help this industry to go, grow. So maybe a little bit more of enlightenment, a little bit more of um, working together with the government is going to actually help the government to be able to understand what they need or how they need to support the industry. You will agree with me that it's going to be difficult for government to do anything, when they especially, when, especially when they don't understand what we are doing in the industry. So we need to involve the government or the government to be involved. And once that is done and government patronize local uh, companies, there will be a lot of improvement. And actually, they are doing that. They are doing a lot of that through NIDA. And I believe we can, they can still do more. I believe they can do more. And how do you battle the challenge of your end users or your audience preferring foreign software solutions to indigenous solutions? Well, that, that has been very difficult for us, okay? Uh, uh, we are, we, Nigerians need to be re-educated and they need to realize that good things can come from Nigeria, okay? Uh, it will shock you that many of these foreign solutions that Nigerians run after were still developed by Nigerians being part of those teams over there, okay? But they, we just need to believe that things, good things can come from here. And as it is now, we are beginning to see that Nigeria is capable of a lot of things. And they like change a lot of things in the market. And there are still other companies that are doing that right now. And we believe that all we need in the local industry is support and encouragement from the market, from the population, from the consumer. And they will see that a lot are possible here. I will tell you this, Nigerians are smart. Nigerians are ingenious. And Nigerians will really, really, really understand how these applications work. And all we need to do is to just give them a chance to do this. And what are some of the other challenges plaguing the industry? Well, the number one on that list is uh, <laughs> Jaguar syndrome. I'm sorry I have to say that. Um, a lot of people are living, they are living in droves and it's affecting the industry. So you find out that when you train a set of engineers, by the time they are good enough to be called real tech, tech guys, okay, okay uh, they are being poached by companies abroad. That's a big problem. Another major challenge is that uh, the government doesn't recognize some of the things we need uh, that we need to buy with Forex, okay? It's not everything that we can make locally. There are some things that we still need to get Forex for, and getting Forex to get these things are difficult. Like a high-level computer for processing, we can't get that, I mean, we can't manufacture that yet in Nigeria. But you need a lot of foreign exchange to get this, okay? And those sometimes affect uh, productivity, you know? But we believe we are finding ways around it, okay? And uh, for me, I will stick with those two for now. What do you think is the way forward? The way forward for, for the industry really is for us to begin to, uh, well, the way, like I said earlier, we still have to encourage the local market. We have to patronize our own products. And once this happens, I believe the local companies who can make enough money to keep the engineers here, and keep developing more solutions to help, the, to help the country. See, Nigeria can earn a lot of resources, foreign resources from applications that, that are made in Nigeria and we're able to sell. It's a, it's a low hanging fruit for our government and they should look into it and see how they can encourage locals to do more than what they are doing right now. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on the program. Thank you. Thank you, you're welcome.